Good morning. I hate to ask this question, but are we sometimes our own worst enemies? Our reading today is drawn from Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 7 to 10. Now therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, why do you commit this great evil against yourselves, to cut off from you man and woman, child and infant, out of Judah, leaving none to remain, in that you provoke me to wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense to other gods in the land of Egypt, where you have gone to dwell, that you may cut yourselves off and be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives, your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives, which they committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They have not been humbled to this day, nor have they feared. They have not walked in my law or in my statutes that I set before you and your fathers. So the people are further reminded by the prophet Jeremiah that their own actions have brought them to this present uh, emergency situation that they're in today. They're suffering now, but they did act in rebellion. And you know, God's approach doesn't change. We can always depend on that. He doesn't change his approach. He's consistent. If they continue in disobedience, they're going to continue to suffer, and they're continuing then to align themselves against God, and how's that going to work out for them? I think we all know the answer. Disobedience produces fruit, sin produces wages and fruit, and, and these wages and fruit will, will continue to multiply toward us. We don't want that. And you know, the same thing applies to you and I. If we continue today to wallow in worldliness, What's the outcome going to be? I mean, how's that going to end? Are, are we expecting it to end differently than it's ever ended in thousands of years? No, it's not going to happen that way. God has so much good for us. He wants so much more for us. So he sent, he sent his prophets to us to help us understand and draw close to his ways. Oh, may the Lord give us really big ears to hear and do the will of Jesus. Now let's, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, perhaps you're asking us in this passage, as far as applying it, why don't we come up higher? Why don't we? Why are we satisfied at the lowlands? Why are we satisfied to be in the in the fog in the valleys? Why can't we come up higher, Lord, where, where we can see better, where we're closer to you? Oh, please be our helper. Help us not to settle for disobedience and the results that flow from that. Help us to, to be holy thine, as the hymn says. Oh, Lord, thank you for hearing our prayer. And now, Lord, we ask that you'll help us by provoking us to righteousness. And this we ask for in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm afraid we need to be a lot more self-reflective. We need to pause long enough to think that, to realize that a lot of things that happen to us, they really happen as a response or as a, as a consequence of our own disobedience. What we do affects what we're becoming. So let's do what will cause us to become followers of Jesus more closely. God be with you today.